Hello, in this presentation I will talk about flexible manufacturing cells and the use of robots within these cells. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to know and differentiate between different types of industrial manufacturing processes in order to understand the advantages that flexible manufacturing offers compared to manual or class or classical, uh, classic manufacturing models for a given production volume. May, mo, may mostly. In addition to this, I will explain the elements involved in flexible manufacturing systems and specifically flexible manufacturing cells, as well as how robots are used within these cells and their distribution. Also, I will show some ideas regarding with the robot communica communication with other devices such as PLCs and low-level digital uh, signals in flexible manufacturing cells. To finish the presentation, I will talk about simulation tools in order to design flexible manufacturing cells. Manufacturing processes can be classified into three categories attending to the aspects uh, or aspects such as their production, capacity, quality, part cost and flexibility. Uh, the selection of one manufacturing process or another will mostly depend on these aspects. Manual manufacturing processes are carried out by human operators and they, or just simply by machinery but uh, which is manually controlled. Its produce, production is low and the quality is generally low, but in exchange there is a great flexibility in adapting the production, but at a very high cost per part. Classic manufacturing using specialized machinery for mass production generally has a high or the highest production and product quality. Uh, but in this case its flexibility to adapt to uh, changes in the production is generally low. This type of production achieves a low production costs per part. And finally we have flexible manufacturing that combines flexible manufacturing systems that allow medium or high productions with a very good quality and in this case with a medium or low cost per part. But unlike classic manufacturing they can adapt to changes in the production because the machinery is controlled by a computer or in this case uh, such as CNC or PLC or whatever and they use this kind of machines, uh, CNCs or robots in order to adapt uh, the production. So if we compare the flexible manufacturing uh, with, uh, in this case, versus the manual manufacturing, we observe that its productivity is much higher, the quality is better and also it's safer and more profitful, uh, prof profitable uh, for la larger series despite of having a low part cost. On the other hand, if we compare flexible manufacturing versus classic manufacturing, uh, then we observe that through flexible manufacturing we will be able to modify and adapt the product to the market needs in changes uh, in the product demands. Producing similar products in a flexible manufacturing system represents no challenge and over cost because it has been designed for that. In general we will have a lower stock uh, or stored product because the production can be adapted to the demands, maintaining a medium or low cost per part. Therefore, if we focus on flexible manufacturing systems, we will see that there are three clearly differentiated levels. We have a first level in which a CNC machine or robot processes a set of parts. Normally, this can be adapted to the production of few parts or to produce similar parts, but in a different way. On the other hand, a flexible manufacturing cell that involves two or more CNC or robots. In this case, the machines are coordinated to be able to manufacture a specific aspect of the manufacturing process and generally um, the set of machines uh, are responsible for manufacturing a specific uh, aspect of the part. Uh, but because we can use multiple options, uh, the manufacturing process can be greatly uh, adapted. 
This type of cells usually include loading and unloading stations of parts and uh, PLCs to coordinate uh, the machines. A cell or a flexible manufacturing cell lacks uh, of a global vision or centralized uh, uh, production uh, vision and this is indeed uh, done by a flexible manufacturing system which is cons consists of a set of flexible manufacturing cells that will be able to adapt the production, the whole production, to demand changes in a very generic way and at the same time keep uh, a medium production volume. Obviously flexibility lies in the fact that machines can be reprogrammed to modify their task but always within what was originally planned or so if our robot or CNC machine does not include the possibility of manufacturing a specific part in a certain way because the tool is not available, obviously the flexible manufacturing system will not be able to manufacture that kind of part. However, once you have designed a flexible manufacturing system, it is quite straightforward to extend, to uh, extend it to new capabilities if necessary. A parameter that determines what type of machinery or manufacturing system is more convenient for us is the production volume. If the production volume of parts is low, we are talking here about let's say 10,000 units, then it is easy to, uh, for us to use a CNC machine or a robot for that kind of production. In this case, since we have a low production volume, the cost per part usually is medium or high, but in general we will have a great adaptability. On the other hand, when parts to be produced uh, are produced in batches of units approximately of 5,000 to 200,000 parts, it is usually more convenient to use flexible manufacturing cells within or with sorry, uh, one robot or more robots and CNC machines. In this case, the cost per part is usually medium or low with a great adaptability. In some cases, the whole flexible manufacturing system can be implemented if the volume production is justified. But generally, this is only for high production volumes, let's say more than 100,000 pieces. And this is usually convenient uh, to use in this case, uh, or might be convenient to, to use specific production lines if we are talking about mass production. So the question that naturally arises for us is how we use robots uh, within these flexible manufacturing cells. They, in this case, uh, they can be seen just as another uh, CNC machine, which is just simply being controlled by, uh, in this case, uh, or usually by a PLC. Uh, these machines uh, are used for manipulating, machining, or carrying on just uh, a specific part. Uh, and they can be reprogrammed to and adapted to several uh, processes um, if, if required. So, um, in, uh, in general, robots will be integrated together with CNC machines and among all, they will offer a wide range of manufacturing possibilities for many types of parts. Sometimes robots are just simply used to move parts from one machine to another. Um, in any case, synchronism of uh, all signals between different processes is required for a proper operation and this coordination is usually carried out by means of a PLC which is usually in charge of uh, interconnect all these uh, machines uh, through industrial communication buses. There are different layouts of flexible manufacturing cells concerning robots, uh, centralized, inline or mobile. In the first one, the robot is the main element of the cell and around it, it has all necessary equipment uh, forming a circle or a semicircle. In the inline layout, a conveyor belt carries the product and the robot or robots perform the operations on the sides of the conveyor belt. In a mobile distribution, the robot can move either freely or just using a conveyor belt and this is usually part of uh, manufacturing cells that they have a larger workspace and they're able to uh, transport parts from one machine to another within the same manufacturing cell. 
Every industrial robot has associated a robot controller. This controller is in charge of coordinating the movements of robots by attending uh, digital signals uh, for local uh, process control. They also use uh, industrial field buses when the information to be transmitted is more than just one bit. Uh, from a control architecture point of view, the controller can be seen as a controller uh, or can be seen as a device in which other higher level uh, devices such as let's say a PLC are the ones uh, in charge of coordinating the robot, robot's movement. For this reason, within flexible manufacturing systems, there are different uh, levels of communications. At the lowest levels, uh, we have a robot, a robot uh, with input signals, uh, input or output signals, which uh, are directly connected to the robot controller. And this is, as I said before, to locally control the manufacturing process. And then we have a flexible manufacturing cells um, to coordinate the production within um, uh, several uh, robots or CNC machines. And in this case, we use a PLC. And uh, they, they include, as I said before, loading and unloading stations, let's say. And then we have in the upper levels, uh, we have uh, usually find a, a computer office for monitoring the entire plant. And, uh, and these kind of computers, they have access to internet and many other uh, databases and so on. The response time of the different levels to communicate is slower as we are in the top of this pyramid, starting from response times from milliseconds to response times uh, uh, that can be up to seconds and even minutes in the highest levels if we need to download a big file or whatever. At the same time, the amount of information used in the lowest level is just usually a bunch of bits while in the higher levels uh, we transmit data uh, usually uh, in terms of megabytes or even more. Robot safety is a fundamental aspect that must be taken into account. Um, for that we define protocols and requirements that must be met in order to stop the robot if necessary. For all these uh, flexible manufacturing cells usually have elements to guarantee um, uh, this safety through uh, digital signals and also even through um, field buses. Here I show just simply a couple of examples of how a robot with different safety elements can be stopped. Uh, we can stop the robot, let's say, from the control path, but also from signals coming from safety barriers or emergency buttons, among others. To finish the presentation, I also would like to discuss the use of simulation tools in flexible manufacturing cells to detect potential bottlenecks, improve flexibility and correct potential problems. There are fundamentally two types of simulations. Discrete event-based simulations, which are in charge of simulating cues and flows between different processes, as is the case of visual component software. Uh, that specializes in designing uh, or the design of factories from a general perspective, or also SYNCAT, which is another program that can be used to run discrete simulations. On the other hand, continuous simulations are in charge of simulating what happens during the manufacturing process, mainly focus on robot programming aspects and sensorization, uh, collision detection, etc. They can be used to design uh, flexible manufacturing cells, but at a small scale. They are not usually optimized for large-scale simulation or a complete flexible manufacturing system, as is, in the, as is the case of the previous uh, tools that I mentioned. For continuous simulations, uh, we can use tools offered by each of the robot manufacturers, such as Robot Studio from ABB, KUKA Sim from KUKA, or we can just simply use generic simulator tools such as Copelisim, Gazebo, among others. In this presentation, I have introduced flexible manufacturing cells and the use of robots within them. Thank you very much.